Hi, this exercise deals with lab safety in the microbiology lab. It's in a continuation of the previous one, which talked about general lab safety. But this one is, would include in a microbiology lab all the general, in addition, also this, these few things to keep in mind. Most labs at a college or university level will be rated as either a biosafety level one, which is referred to as BSL one or BSL two. You're going to be using your standard aseptic techniques. That means trying to keep everything sterile so that you are not introducing into any contaminants. You don't want to introduce any bacteria, fungi, viruses that aren't supposed to be in the cultures. You're often working with a pure culture, so you don't want to introduce any outside uh, contaminants. You will be learning what those standard aseptic techniques are, how to do it. It keeps you safe. It keeps everyone safe in the lab. Certainly in a microbiology lab, you have to be wearing your proper lab attire. This, as I said, was discussed previous uh, in the previous exercise. You don't always have to have a lab coat on, but in particular in my lab, I, in a in place of a lab coat, wear a large extra size uh, t-shirt to protect your clothing. Any microbiology lab will have a biohazard sign posted on the door because we are working with, with live cultures. And then you have to be familiar with what the proper disposal procedures are, which was also previously discussed in the, the previous slide. In terms of the ratings of the lab, which I mentioned, the BSL-1 versus BSL-2, uh, the actual rating goes up to four. A B, the differences between was a BSL-1, you're working with non-pathogenic organisms. So for most healthy adults, it's not going to make you sick as long as you're using your, once again, your, your general operating procedures or practices. And that includes aseptic techniques. A BSL-2, the difference is now, is that some of the organisms you're working with may be slightly pathogenic. They could also be a threat to the environment where they're not naturally in the environment um, or it could possibly contaminate water supply. So there's an extra level now of precaution that you need to take. Certainly wearing gloves, wearing lab coats. Um, in a BSL-3, in this case now, you are definitely working with human pathogens. They could cause very serious illness or possibly even death. So in this case, in a lab, you're going to have limited access as to who can enter the lab. You're going to be working in special hoods where the airflow is blowing the air away from you to help prevent you from becoming uh, infected. Certainly, your aseptic technique comes into play here. You must know how to work with it. Most uh, universities, certainly community colleges, are not rated as a BSL-3 lab. And then the highest level is a BSL-4. In this case, you are working with uh, microorganisms that often are uh, fatal. They are usually unusual, fairly rare organisms or exotic organisms. These are ones that often do not have any known treatment or vaccine available. You are working with the worst of the worst here. So there are only a few labs that are rated in the US as a BSL-4. An example one would be at the CDC. Oftentimes work that is being performed in a BSL-4 lab is when you have a new emerging um, disease, you're trying to figure out how it's being transmitted, you're trying to figure out, say, what antibiotics may be susceptible to so that you can improve your treatments of anyone who, be, who is infected. You usually are working um, basically what we call suited up in a biohazard suit with a special separate air supply to you. So this is where you're working with the, the most serious um, of the microorganisms, which could be bacteria, fungi, or uh, viruses. In our lab, we are working, as I said, with um, BSL-1. We are working with organisms that are commonly found, uh, are not pathogenic to a, a healthy individual. Now, if somebody was immunocompromised, such as, say, going through chemotherapy treatments, 
Their immune system is not working 100%, so they might be a little bit more susceptible and a little bit more at risk to it. But once again, you don't have to, to use any special like airflow hoods or things like that. Uh, we will be working as always at all times using aseptic technique. You should always, no matter what level you're working at, remember just some of those basic lab techniques.